what yeah. options, what good options do the airlines currently face? Well, they're just facing reality, Kelly, and adjusting as quick as they can. They're looking at all their variable costs, and they've been scrambling because the fixed cost basis is so high to, to reduce this every month, and I think September will be no, be no change. The big problem is, of course, things change on them where countries won't allow them to come in or change their quarantine or quarantine their crew members. So the international is a very difficult market for them. And then, of course, as Phil mentioned, the domestic market has taken a hit, although it's you know down only 60-something percent. Yeah. It, it's just not a good time. Phil, there's something on the international side that's kind of under the radar but significant. There's awful delays at the passport office. I mean, if you're trying to sure. get overseas and you have any kind of looming passport issue within the next six months, the expediting offices are closed. You're talking about a three to five month wait just to renew a passport right now. It would seem to me if Congress wants to help these sectors, they could at least get rid of those obstacles. Absolutely. Uh, they could. Uh, yeah. And I think Gordon would agree with me. I don't think there's a lot of optimism that that's going to happen, Kelly. I mean, it's been like that for some time. And the fact of the matter is, I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. I mean, if there's any good news in this entire situation is that there are relatively fewer people, there are fewer people who are flying internationally right now. And a lot of that is because of restrictions. You can't fly over to most countries in Europe and, and a number of other countries have restrictions on Americans flying into them. Gordon, I'm asking because I'm genuinely curious and I don't know. Uh, but when airlines cut schedules, let's say they say they're not going to fly to Greenville, Spartanburg, or they're not going to fly to Reno, or they're not going to fly to Wichita, how much pressure can individual senators or Congress people put on them to, in effect, force them to maintain service in those cities? What's the game behind the game? Well, Tyler, they really can't because these guys are mount they're they're fighting survival. This isn't for fun. And they're not doing it for any other reason than that, that, that negative cash flow. And, of course, it's about conserving cash. The cash burn every day is tremendous. And they only have so many reserves and, of course, what the government might lend them. So that's they may alienate some small cities for a while, but they have to do what they have to do. And I think even their employees understand it, and they're being let go, as Phil mentioned, at the, at the end of next month. It's going to be a traumatic unemployment situation, even though they've mitigated it with early outs and early retirements. It's just like scrambling for conserving cash. That's what they're doing. Final question, and, But Tyler, or Kelly, can I inter ahead. interject Absolutely, real quick, yeah. you know, playing off of what Gordon had to say? This is at the heart of why many believe the CARES Act extension will go through, that there are a lot of people, both Republicans and Democrats in Washington, who want to ensure that service is maintained to some of these smaller markets. And that's why they're saying, yes, give them another $25 billion to ensure that those jobs are in place, because that would also ensure that no service is cut to some of those smaller markets. And I was going to ask kind of a similar question to that, Phil, which is at what point do you think these airlines will be viable without government aid? Well, well, they're viable, I mean, in terms of, and I'll let Gordon answer here as well, but they're viable in terms of, are these guys going to go bankrupt tomorrow? No. But, but if they don't have the government aid, they're going to let go, what, 75,000 people. So the, the question becomes, do you want to keep those 75,000 employed? Then you give them the $25 billion if you're in Washington. Uh, otherwise, you let them cut. They, they will continue to bring down their cash burn. Gordon, what do you think? Well, I, they may subsidize the employment again. I'm not sure that would be the correct answer. But they really have to have a, a viable marketplace. They've got a lot of fixed costs because airplanes you know, got to be paid for whether you fly them or not, gate space and all. It's just tremendous. So they've got to cut their costs. They're losing money today. If we extend it, that's great. But the government aid for employees, but if they don't get government aid for their balance sheet, their treasury, their cash, they're not going to be there. And so some of the weaker guys are going to fail. That's just the way it's going to happen.